In this video, we're going to be looking at the laws of indices. Okay, so we're going to build them from the ground up. A lot of this stuff is going to be GCSE material. Um, so if you're happy with it, you may as well move on. Uh, but it's always good to get that kind of check and confirmation that what you learned before was correct. Okay, so let's start off with uh, the concept of building up indices and where they're really coming from. So we want a shorthand notation for multiplying uh, two unknowns together, for example, and we should know that that is x squared, okay? And so if I have x times x times x, that becomes x cubed, okay? So the index is telling us how many times I'm multiplying x by itself. Now, if I put in these as x squareds, okay, if I put these in as x squareds, well, now I've got really two different things here. I've got the fact that I've got x squared times x squared times x squared, which means x times x, which is the x squared, times x times x, uh, times x times x. So really, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six x's there multiplied by each other. So this is really x to the six. But clearly, this is also x squared multiplied by itself three times. So this is x squared cubed. Okay. So what we're really seeing here is a few different indice laws um, working together really because we've got this idea this concept that when I'm multiplying um, with the same base number that's what we refer to as this x this base value um, then I can add the indices together 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6 but I've also got this fact here that if I have x squared in a bracket cubed, then I can multiply the 2 and the 3 together to beget the 6. Okay, so the indices there multiply together. So what I've got are two laws of indices that I would, is worthwhile writing down, in that if I've got two values with the same base number, so let's use uh, P and Q as the indices, so if I've got x as the same base value, p and q uh, may be the same value, they may not. This is the same as x to the p plus q, okay? That's where this concept of 2 plus 2 plus 2 makes the 6 is coming from. Now I've also got this concept here. So if I've got x to the p in a bracket to the q, that's x to the pq. But of course, p times q is the same as q times p. So in actual fact, I could rewrite this. This would be exactly the same as saying, well, x cubed squared. And this would get me the same thing, because that would be x cubed times x cubed same base value, so x to the 3 plus 3, which makes the 6 again. Okay, so I can reorder the p and the q to my leisure. Okay, if it's easier working with uh, the p than the q, uh, or the q than the p, then I can reverse them around. So this is exactly the same if I rewrite this as x to the q, p. Uh, which is x to the pq, okay? So we've got these two concepts uh, when we're talking about indices. Now, if, on the other hand, I am dividing here, okay? So if I've got something like x to the 5 divided by x cubed, okay? rather than uh, multiplying, 
We know that a division is just a fraction, so I could write that as x to the 5 over x cubed. These two things are the same. Now, x to the 5 is just x times x times x times x times x. And x cubed is x times x times x. And what we're finding is that if I've got common factors in the numerator and denominator, then I can cancel them. So I've got a common uh, factor there. So I've got an x there and an x there, so they can go. I've got a common factor there, so they can go. And I've got a common factor there as well, so they can go. And what I'm left with is x times x in the numerator. 1 in the denominator, so I've just now got x times x, which is just x squared. So it appears that because I'm removing 1 by 1 from the numerator denominator, that really I am just subtracting the, five, uh, the 3 from the 5. So this is just the same as x to the 5 minus 3, OK, that x squared. So when I am dividing, then the indices are subtracted, OK? So I now have here three indice laws that I can work with uh, from here on out, OK? These are true. Right, so if that's how they work, then what about for particular values of P and Q? Okay, Because we understand um, what re is really happening, what I mean by something like x to the 3. Okay, I know what that is, that's x times x times x. But what do we mean when we're talking about x to the 3.5? What happens when the power becomes a decimal? How does that work? Well, as long as the decimal you're working with can become, well, can be represented as a fraction. So what I'm talking about here, if you we're thinking about what we did in the previous video. I'm talking about rational numbers here. As long as that power is a rational number, so in this case I could write this as x to the 7 halves, then we have a way of understanding what that does. Okay. Now, let's see. If I use this rule up here, this one here, this third one, then if I could write 7 halves as a product of two things, so 7 halves is the same as 7 times a half, OK? So 7 times a half. Now, let's reorder those, OK? Because that would be exactly the same as that. And if I think back to this, well, OK, that means that x to the half times 7 is the same as x to the half to the 7. OK, because having it within the bracket means that these two things are multiplied. So I understand what um, the 7 does. OK, it's multiplying by itself 7 times. But the problem is that fraction. What does that fraction actually mean? What is that doing? Well, the fraction that we use, so 1 over a number here in this case, is a root. Okay, So we use that to represent a, a root. So in the sense of a half, that is a square root. So what we are saying here is that if I've got x to the 1 over p, then this is the pth root of x, OK? So when we've got this x to the half, I'm just meaning the square root of x, 
Okay, that's what that represents. If this had been a third, this would be the cube root of x. If it had been a quarter, then this would be the fourth root of x. So this is another part of indices that we need to be able to identify. Okay, and this ability to manipulate and choose the order is very important and something that we'll be coming back to in the next uh, few videos. Okay, so that takes care of rational numbers. What if we had an irrational number? Well, therein lies uh, some problems. Okay, so although um, although these three rules that we have here, these laws, if you will, will work for irrational numbers as well, actually understanding uh, what x to the root 2 um, or x to the pi, what that is actually doing that is a little bit more complicated, okay? And really beyond the scope of this video. But feel free uh, to look it up, okay? And to investigate what happens in those cases. But if we've got those rational numbers sorted then, um, that leaves us well, what about with negative numbers, okay? Because we've dealt with uh, the natural numbers, okay, uh, from one, two, three, the countable ones. We know what they represent. We know what the fractions represent. We haven't written down what zero represents. Okay, so if I've got x to the zero, well, x to the zero, if you think about um, another way of writing zero, then that could be uh, 2 take away 2, for example. x to 0 is x to the 2 take away 2. It would be the same thing. Now, I know that the subtraction of indices, like up here, means it's x to the 2 divided by x to the 2. OK? But I know that if I do one thing and divide it by itself, I just get 1. So x to the 0 must be 1. Okay? And it makes sense through the indice laws that we've worked with. So we can definitely write that one down here. Okay? x to the 0 is 1. That, of course, is really dependent on the value of x. Um, and it won't work when x is 0. Okay? Uh, when you start looking at 0 to the power of 0, strange things start happening. Yet another one to look up and research. Okay? But for any other value of x, as long as it's not 0, that's fine. Okay? So we've got those negative numbers. Let's have a look at those negative numbers. Um, so what is going to happen when I'm talking about x to the minus 1? What does that really mean? Well, we could use a similar idea to how we looked at x to the 0. Because I could write that as x to the, uh, let's say, 4 take away 5. Now that is x to the 4 divided by x to the 5. Okay, That's how we used our second law that we have there. So what I would have is x times x, times x, times x. So four x's multiplied together on the numerator. And in the denominator, I'd have five. So x times x, times x, times x, times x. And because we've got common factors, we can cancel. So x, 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 x. And that's, of course, going to leave me with 1 in the numerator, okay, when one, all of those have gone, I'm left with 1, and I've got x in the denominator. So that means that x to the minus 1 
is 1 over x. Okay, So that minus sign is just giving us the reciprocal. Okay, This is called the reciprocal of x. So that means if I had x to the minus 2, say, let's say that would now be 6. So I'd have an extra x in the denominator. And I'd be left with an extra x left over. So I'd now have x times x in the denominator. So I'd have x squared. So we're seeing that x to the minus 1 is 1 over x. x to the minus 2 is 1 over x squared. So x to the minus p is 1 over x to the p. OK? So these are the laws of indices. These are really kind of how they work together. And these three are identities that we can utilise. OK? So it is very important that you know these and are, are able to apply them in different situations. OK? And we are going to look at a few different situations in the following videos.